This is the screencast for Lesson 33 in Stephen C Sharp 24 Hour Trainer. The focus of this lesson is on drag and drop. In this triad, we're going to enhance the drag source and drop target example program so that they can handle moves as well as copies. This is the drag source program. Right now, it checks to see that the right mouse button is down, creates a new data object, and then calls do drag drop to begin the drag and drop operation. It passes in drag drop effects copy so that it only allows copies. It's easy enough to make this also allow moves. We simply add or drag drop effects dot move in here. Now this drag and drop is going to allow moves and copies. However, there's one more thing this program has to do. If we do a copy, everything is as before. But if we do a move, then we're assuming that this program is losing its data and giving it to another program. In that case, we need to get the data out of this program. Take it away. To do that, we simply check the result of this do drag drop call to see if it's a move. If that method returns move, that means the drop target accepted a move, not a copy. All right, so if it is a move, then I'm just going to take the text out of the label. And that's all there is to it. That's quite easy. The drop target is a little bit more complicated, so let's take a look at that. Here's the text for the drop target. First, on the drag enter, the program checks to see if text is available, and if it is, it allows a drag effects copy. In this case, I've also modified the text to add or drag effects move. So now the program will allow a move or a copy. In the drag drop event handler, this is the old version, if text is present, then the program gets the data using get data out of the data object and saves it in the, la in the label. And then it sets e.effect equal drag effects dot copy to tell the drag source that it copied the text. <clears throat> that much is fine unless we do a move. If we're doing a move, then what we need to do is change this so that we set e.effect to be a move. So how do we do that? Instead of simply indicating that we copied, what we need to do is decide whether we're doing a move or not. To do that, I'm going to check to see whether the control key is down. If the control key is down, then I'm going to let the user do a copy. If it's not down, I'm going to do a move. So to make that test, first I'm going to define a constant. Const int, I'm going to call it key control equals 8. This is a bit mask, so if you were to look at the bits, there would only be one bit set in this thing uh, to indicate the control key. So this statement I'm going to leave alone because no matter whether we're copying or pasting, we do want to grab the data. And then here I'm going to say if e dot key state and key control is not equal zero, then I want to do something. Now e dot key state is an integer, as you can see from this tooltip. And it has, it's a bit mask that has bits set to indicate whether the Shift, Control, and Alt keys are pressed, as well as some information about the state of the mouse buttons. The Control keys bit is in the same position as it is in this value, key control. So if here what I'm doing is I'm taking a bitwise AND of those two values. If the bits are both set in both values, then the result is not zero. If this key state does not have that bit set, then when I AND it with key control, the result is zero. So that would tell us that the control key is not pressed. So in this case where the result is not zero, the control key is pressed. So we're going to do a copy. The only real difference to the program is telling the drag source that we're doing a copy. So I'm going to say e dot effect equals drag drop effects dot copy. Else, if the control key is not pressed, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say e dot effect equals drag drop effects dot move. So that'll tell the drag source that we moved the data instead of copying it. So now let's run these two programs and see what happens. Here's our drop target. Here's the drag source. Let me get these on the screen. All right, so I right click and I start the drag. The drag source cannot accept a drop, so it's showing the no drop mouse uh, cursor. The Visual Studio will also not accept a drop. 
Now I'm over the drop target. Right now it's displaying the little, this is a copy icon. Now I'm going to press the control key, so I've got it down, and then drop the text. And I got a copy. So you'll see that it's now in the drop target and it's still in the drag source. Let me do it again, only this time I'm not going to hold down the control key and I'll drop the text. You, you can't tell that the drop target replaced its text because it was the same text, but you can see that the drag source dropped its, so it's gone from there. Okay, that's pretty good. There's one thing that's missing though. When I let me run the programs again real fast. <clears throat> and oops, where'd it go? There it is. When I I'm gonna drag over the drop target again, and now I'm gonna press the control key. You see the cursor doesn't change. I'll release the control key. The cursor still doesn't change. So the drop target isn't updating its cursor to show whether I'm currently doing a drag or a, a copy or a drop. Oh, sorry, a copy or a move. So the way we fix that is we go to the drop target and we give it a new event handler. We'll go to the uh, label and I'll open up the properties window, go to the events selection and find drag over. Oh, hang on. We did this on the form, not the label. You could put these events on the label itself. In this application, I put them on the form. So we've got our drag drop and drag enter event handlers already. We want to add a drag over. So let's go do that. <clears throat> now what this thing needs to do is this event fires periodically as long as the drag is over the target. And uh, you can use this to give the user some feedback about what kind of a drop would occur if the user currently drops. So we're going to need to know about the control key again. So I'm going to make this constant again. And I'm going to check the key state just like I did before. So if e dot key state and key control is not equal to zero, then that means the control key is pressed. Else control key is not pressed. If the control key is pressed, what I want to do is tell the drag drop system that I'm ready to accept a copy. So I'm going to say e.effect equals drag drop effects dot copy. This is just like it is for the um, for the other case. For when we actually accept the drop and we're telling the drop source, the drag source, that which what we've done. If control is not pressed, then I wanted to say e dot effect equals drag drop effects dot move. <coughs> so this should give the user some feedback. So let me run the program again. And we'll run our drag source. So here's drag source. Here's our drop target. Now I right click and drag. And now notice it's not showing the little plus sign. Now it's saying this will be a move if you drop it now. I'm going to press the control key down and it adds a little plus sign. It's saying this will be a copy. So I'm going to drop it now and we got a copy as desired. Let me do it again. Come over here. Control key is up. Control key is down. Control key is up again. I'll do a drop now. This should be a move. Excellent. So not only have we managed to move the data from one to the other, the drag source responds appropriately. It can clear out its data if it's a move. And we're providing feedback to the user to let the user know if you drop it now, will this be a move or a drag? Here, I'll drag the empty text now. Drag that over there. I'll make it a move. So we just dragged an empty string onto the drop target so it cleared.